Today's video is brought to you by storyboardthat.com. Please visit teachercast.net slash storyboard that for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tech Educator Podcast, episode number 82. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tonight, we have a great show. We're talking all about iBooks author and how you can create multi-touch books using your iPad, your Mac, and a little bit of creativity. We have some fantastic guests on the show to us with us tonight, but before we begin, I want to share with you some of the great things that are happening over on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcast Network. Today was a big day for us. We actually released our first completely homemade iBooks program. If you go over to teachercast.net, right on our side, you have a button now that says enroll in our brand new ebook today. We have created a brand new ebook all about kid blog and how you can create some amazing digital students using online um, blogging and, and uh, blog broadcasting. So if you check it out, it is $1.99. We love it. It's a great way to support the channel. I want to say thank you guys to everybody out there who has supported everything by pre-ordering your book, but it is available today. If you know a teacher that's out there using kid blog, check it out today. You can find more information about that over at teachercast.net slash kid blog book. Teachercast.net slash kid blog book. All right. We are here. Episode number 82. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We have a healthy live show tonight over at teachercast.tv if you're there we are here live in our chat room i want to say thank you to patty and peggy and steve and everybody over there in our chat room we're gonna have a great show for us tonight I want to introduce our guests tonight that are amazing ibook people they are doing so many different things I want to bring on mr anthony anthony how are you tonight thank you so much for joining us on the show how are you today I'm doing well, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me back on the show. Uh, I love to be a part of uh, TeacherCast, and uh, it's exciting to share what we're doing, and uh, thank you for allowing us to share that. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Now, last year, you guys came on and did an amazing show about iBooks and showed us how to get on and how to use it, and today, you're going to show us some pretty advanced things about iBooks Author, aren't you? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know about how, how advanced we're going, but yeah, there's little tips definitely look at and uh, I, I think when it comes to e-publishing and using iBooks author it, it can seem really overwhelming but there's some really slick little things that you can do to update the design, the look, the feel, the style, the layout of your book and uh, and then to raise the level of interactivity so hopefully we'll show you a few things that you can walk away with and implement right away. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Also want to bring on Steve Dickey. Steve, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. So uh, thanks for having us on again. It's, you know, like I said, we had a lot of fun last year when we came on. And so it's really good to have an opportunity again to share uh, what we're doing with uh, iBooks and iBooks Author. I love talking iBooks Author. I love it when you guys are on to talk about these things. Now, you're also going to be sharing with us later on something called iBook Hack. Now, we'll get into this a little bit later, but give us a preview of what is iBookHack.org. So uh, Tony and I started doing. Uh, a couple years ago, we got together and started basically doing hackathons where we get teachers together working on content together as well as learning how to use iBooks Author. And so we're holding another one of those hacks this summer. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it'll be uh, as well attended as the past. And where is that hack going to be? It's going to be in Zeeland, Michigan. So on the uh, west side of Michigan. Michigan. Nice. Yep. Nice. We will definitely get into about or get into some information all about that show tonight. Also want to bring on for the first time, Justin. Justin, how are you? Welcome to the show. Pretty good. Uh, coming over from Wichita, Kansas. So uh, thank you for having me on. Excellent. Uh, I, uh, I books quite a bit in class, so it, it's great to be around these masters right here. What do you do in Kansas? Uh, well, I teach freshman and junior English, and I'm also the yearbook advisor. Nice. So I like to use my own future-created iBooks to uh, kind of help bridge the gap between uh, what the what the author's trying to communicate across and what where the students are you know, able to meet them kind of in the middle. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show. 
iBooks author was released, what was it, two years ago, I believe it was, um, at the Apple Education event. And since then, there have been some amazing things happening in the world of digital iBooks. We know that it originally started off as something that you can use only on your iPad. And then last year, with the implementation of... Uh, was it Mac OS Lion, I believe it was, you could then get iBooks and start to use multi-touch books on your desktop device. Anthony, as an Apple Distinguished Educator, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you see happening with iBooks in, in, in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, we really believe that um, iBooks Author is a, it's a, a standard above all other standards when it comes to e-publishing, and um, Apple Distinguished Educators have been using iBooks Author to publish some real media-rich, interactive content. Um, they're using it as a great uh, way to, um, you know, I guess, train other teachers. Um, there's a whole line of content within the iTunes U uh, store or Apple store, iTunes store. Um, under Apple Distinguished Educators, you can go and search uh, Apple Distinguished Educators, and there's courses that are being created by Apple Distinguished Educators um, all around the use of iBooks Author, but then also around just the use of iPad or Mac, um, MacBooks in, in the teaching and learning environment. So it's a great way to great, uh, get great professional development. And uh, teachers are using iBooks Author as an, uh, a publishing platform um, to do that with. And so, yeah, check that out. Um, uh, just search in the iTunes Store, Apple Distinguished Educators, and you're going to come up with a lot of great content. Now, there's, of course, a few different categories that people are using iBooks Author for. They're creating textbooks. They're creating personal books. They're creating professional development manuals for their entire school district. And it's really, really easy to set up. Um, you know, just thinking back a few weeks ago when I started writing the Kid Blog book, it, it was very simple to write up a script, if you will, and then just drop that content into iBooks. I've seen first graders do this. I've seen professors do this. It really is a simple platform for online uh, EPUB um, documents. Yeah, absolutely. It's a drag and drop. What you see is what you get uh, user interface with the possibilities of really going beyond that too. Uh, when you start talking about the interactivity and creating um, the, the multi-touch media rich features, you, and then you're really looking at opening up um, the possibilities and the potential for that, that digital publishing. Now, Justin, as an English teacher, how are you using these multi-touch books? Are you using them with your students to create stuff, or are you creating the books for your students in place of a textbook? Uh, well, great question. Right now, uh, I just started off with a MacBook, an iPad, and a projector. And I was using Air Server to uh, really put all of them together. It started off last year because uh, I was teaching junior English and we were doing American Lit and I, I love the classics and I was a little disappointed, well, a, a lot disappointed that some really great books like Moby Dick weren't, weren't being taught simply because of its length and complexity. So I, I've been meaning to dive into iBooks Author for quite a while, so uh, I did... <laughs> I, I abridged Moby Dick, and, and I cut it to about a quarter of its length. And then I uh, explored a number of different widgets. So uh, I was trying to do that. Now, since then, I've added uh, different ones. I've done things like Animal Farm, uh, Death of a Salesman, uh, Nights. And in all those ones, the students really got a lot more into it. And also helped me because... I had to dig deeper into the books because I was trying to anticipate where the students would have uh, some difficulty. And since since I've gone on Twitter, I've you know discovered uh, some really great teachers, and they've given me a lot of amazing ideas. Uh, so there's one teacher who uh, he has a school-wide initiative where they make textbooks. And uh, they all get together to make the textbooks, and then they uh, put it on the devices. Uh, I met uh, another teacher who has something called TWIMA, uh, T-W-I-M-A, and it's The World is My Audience, and he connects with uh, other teachers uh, around the world. So uh, moving forward, I'm trying to, to get into the spot where I can do some student-created work, and in that sense, you know, being part of TWIMA, 
And also I've started a Poetry Out Loud competition where students, uh, well, part of the Poetry Out Loud competition, where students analyze poetry, they create their own, and then they present poetry from their website. And I've been uh, trying to contact other schools uh, so then we can have all their work in really one place. For me, though, the goal uh, with teacher-created books is that if, if I create enough of them or if I uh, connect with enough people who do create them, then we can really start to differentiate. And so if there's a kid who's lower level or higher level, then you can give them a different iBook. And since all your resources are in one place, then you're not anchored to just one group, but you can uh, float around. Steve, let me ask you a couple of questions about the iBooks community. You know, I, yeah. I, I know recently we reconnected by using the hashtag is that iBooks author chat. Is that, is that the, that's the name of the chat that's going on this each week? Uh, uh, iBooks chat. iBooks chat. Talk to us a little bit about iBooks chat. Where is it? When can we find it? So I really, that was more, I think uh, Justin got that one started and we're doing uh, Thursday nights at uh, what? Nine o'clock Eastern. Uh, yes, yes. And so, what are some of the topics that are that have been discussed on uh, iBooks Chat? Uh, I'll let Justin handle that because he's been to all of them. I've only been to a couple of them so far. Uh, well, uh, we we have first we have first started to uh, just have various questions that we put on there, and then we started to uh, branch out. Right now, we're looking at more themed issues, uh, going along with some other ones. Uh, one of the most recent ones was uh, student-created iBooks and um, and grants writing, how iBooks author can tie into grant writing. Uh, we've had teacher-created ones and school-wide initiatives. And um, Anthony and Steve are going to be the guest moderators on the next one, so they get to come up with a theme for that one. And then uh, also we're, uh, we're looking at um, other guest moderators uh, for an upcoming... Uh, issue where we look at iBooks author in conjunction with uh, iTunes University. That's pretty impressive there. And I would highly recommend if anybody is free on Thursday evenings, definitely check out iBooks chat. I jumped in a couple times over the last few weeks and it is a very, very nice place to get in there. If you've never used iBooks author or if you're even somebody who has created iBooks and wants to just dive deeper into the community, certainly it's a good place if you're there on Thursday nights. Anthony, let me ask you a question here. Can you show us a little bit about iBooks Author? I saw um, you had a you had iTunes pulled up there a couple minutes ago. I did. I was going to share just the iTunes, you know, what I was talking about a little bit. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, iTunes U, and if you just scroll through there, you're going to see this lesson ideas for using apps in the classroom. This is all put out by um, Apple and then Apple Distinguished Educators have created this one best thing. So uh, if we just click on uh, one of those books there uh, and go to the one best thing collection. Oh, it's not going to let me uh, do that. But anyways, these are all books, um, multi-touch books put out by Apple Distinguished Educators. Um, great uh, resources, what they're doing in their classroom, they're sharing, giving you examples, all published through iBooks author. Um, if I just go back here, you can scroll down if it loads there and too far but uh, yeah if you just search in iTunes you and it's not gonna load for me so I'm just gonna stop screen sharing mm -hmm. and uh, bring it back so that's what I was gonna share with you um, nice but if we want to get into a little demo on iBooks Author, we can do that as well. Sure. Why don't you take us through some basics? Because I know we have some people out here watching who have never used iBooks before. Maybe you're starting to get into it. Now, I know the interface is not difficult to pick up. If you're familiar with Pages or Keynote or really any of the Apple interfaces, you can put an iBooks together really simply. Or if you want to make this over a semester project, you can certainly go through and really dive into some of these neat things. Um, show us what you got here, Anthony. Sure. I'm just going to show you kind of maybe an end result here first. This is just going to be my geometric uh, transformations in design. So this is uh, an iBook, multi-touch books that I put out for my geometry student, geometry students, three students, students, 
touch down. I'm obviously viewing this on my Mac laptop, so uh, able to scroll across the different chapters. So any geometry teacher is going to recognize this uh, as you know your Common Core standards that you got to cover. Uh, if we tap on a page, the page expands uh, at the bottom there, and I can swipe through those pages. Um, I have little interactive keynotes right here embedded on the page, so these are just uh, being tapped through, and students can kind of interact with that stuff right there in the content. You have little popover widgets. You have images that can be uh, expanded right there on the page. Um, you have definitions that will expand. You can search terms in glossary. Um, one of the nice features, you know, uh, that's built right into iBooks uh, in any book it comes with is just this idea of adding a note, highlighting something, adding a note to it. So if I want to highlight that in blue, um, I could do that. Uh, if I wanted to add a little note to it, I could add a note, and that note's going to be right there uh, on that page, and it's also going to become a study card for me. So those are built-in features to iBooks Author. Um, really, really slick. Here's a little HTML5 widget that will just suck in a Google form, allow me to collect data from my students as they interact um, with this little GeoGebra sketch over here on the right-hand side. So uh, you can scroll down and see the different questions. Must be really bogged down here tonight <laughs> in the Delora household. Um, so I'm just going to close out of that. But uh, embedded videos, interactive reviews for students to be able to get that immediate feedback. They can check their answers. Obviously, I'm just guessing on these. I really do know the answer, I think. Um, you get the idea. Uh, pinch down, you can again swipe through and just see uh, the different chapters. So that's kind of our end goal. And, and where we begin, how we begin is um, simply we have some files. And I think this is a really important thing because when you think about putting together a thousand piece puzzle, you, you can't just throw it all together at once. You got to kind of collect those pieces, flip those pieces over, start to, you know, put your edge pieces out on the outer edge, your corner pieces in your corners. And that's essentially what what we're doing here. We're, we're taking all the content, taking all the pieces that are going to eventually get into that book and make that book a really media rich, interactive uh, learning experience. And uh, we're putting them all in a, a file. So I just have some text files here, um, pages, I have doc files, either one will work in iBooks Author. I have my book pictures separated down by chapters. These are all either PNGs or JPEGs. They accept a wide variety of uh, um, formats for images, some HTML widgets, which again we'll get into a little bit later on in the show. You know, gallery images. I know these are images that I need to use uh, in a specific gallery. Um, interactive images, which it would include a 3D image that was downloaded from Google SketchUp. So that file is here, easy for me to just drag and drop onto the page in iBooks Author. Keynote files, keynote presentations, video and audio. So here's some movies that I'm going to put in there. Uh, put a little audio clip in there just to show you how that's going to look, and then you know my cover for my book. Now, Anthony, so let me I ask. Those... Let me ask you a couple of questions about the media here. I know that you can create a book with all of your media built into the book, or you can create a book using widgets that pull media from YouTube or other spots. What are the advantages of taking those videos that you have and embedding them into the book? And what's your philosophy on making an iBooks project that's really, really big? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would recommend limiting the size of your iBook author project file to, you know, under 200, 300, 400 megabytes. It just makes it, you know, you're just taking into account, I think, the file space of your students' iPads. And I, when I think about publishing, I have my students in mind. And our students are using, you know, 16 gigabyte iPads. They have limited storage. However, I also know that my students don't all have Wi-Fi access once they leave campus. So it's really important for me that my students are able to access that that real media-rich content offline. And so for me, I tend to author by the chapter, and I keep my books smaller in file size, but I embed the video so that they can view them anytime, anywhere. Now, obviously, the advantage to sucking them off of YouTube. Uh, or streaming them into your book keeps your file size lower. Um, however, it does require that you're connected to internet. Now, do you have any suggestions if we have a video that we've made and we're in Final Cut or we're in iMovie, what suggestions could you give us as far as exporting those files so that way it still looks good, but you're not talking, I mean, 
really, you're not making an HD video to put in iBooks author, correct? I'm not. No, I'm screencasting um, short bits of my uh, teaching, some guided problem solving steps, things like that. So I am not shooting any kind of HD stuff. Um, as far as compressing goes, I recommend that you compress it. Uh, you can compress it multiple times. Um, you know, you can download, uh, I believe Apple has compress uh, Compressor is their software. Uh, I believe you can do it in QuickTime as well. I use MPEG Stream Clip, uh, compress it, and, uh, you know, reduce it down to 30-40%, but it really remains pretty crisp, pretty clear um, as far as the video content and image goes. So. Uh, I will take probably, I, I don't know, a 100 megabyte video that's about eight minutes long uh, for something that I'm going to put in an iBook and I'll compress it at least once and I can get it down to uh, 20 megabytes, um, even less than that. And, and then iBook's author also will compress the video once you drop it onto the page. So they'll, they'll take an extra step there and, and, and bring it down even further. But uh, the quality remains pretty high when I use MPEG Stream Clip. Highly recommend it. Great. Yeah. Uh, let's get into building a book here. So iBooks Author is a free Mac, uh, Apple software. You can download it from the Mac App Store if it's not on your Mac already. When you first launch it, you have um, some great templates to choose from. Again, I think, Jeff, you alluded to this earlier. If you're familiar with any kind of Apple software, it's going to look very familiar to you. Uh, template design. So we'll just go with this photo book. This has kind of been my new crush lately. Um, and I like photo book for uh, multiple reasons. One of the reasons uh, is that it just offers the most variety of other pages. So I always tend to um, reduce my view down here in the lower left-hand corner to 75%. That's the way I see the entire page. Now, if this is your first time in iBooks Author, things could look a little bit overwhelming. Um, you probably have a much more simplified toolbar up here at the top. I've kind of added a few things just because I'm used to doing math type things. I have the superscript subscript. I also just have a few copy style, paste style things. Uh, but across the top, it should look fairly the same. On the left-hand side, this is just going to be referred to as our book pane bar. Uh, if we click on book title, we're going to see our default title here. This is an image placeholder. I can just drag an image on top of that. So you would have noticed in my um, finder here that I had this cover image. I'm just going to kind of toggle back and forth between this finder window here that has my files and iBooks author. So I'm just going to slide that over, and this is my cover image. I'm just going to slide this on top. You'll see the blue box highlighted around the entire frame of the, uh, of the book cover and uh, the green plus. And if I let go, it's just going to replace that image. So uh, now, obviously, I can uh, zoom in and out. Um, this is acting really chunky here. Um, I can drag this around. Let's say I'm doing a book on bikes. This is one of the things you have to understand about me is that I love bikes. And uh, typically when we do uh, iBook Hack, we'll go through building a book, and the book has to be kind of somewhat uh, content generic, so we just use uh, bikes. So I call this my uh, book on bikes. And now uh, I've highlighted this title box here, and you'll see that there's a blue box around that, and that just means that it's hot linked. And when I change the title of that book, you'll notice up here that the, the generic title, book title, went away and replaced it with my book title. And that's important uh, for some metadata on your, your book there. So um, we can just give it a subtitle and uh, an author name down here, and away we go. So here's our book title. Obviously, you can pull it around. Um, if I grab this and pull it up and down, I can expand it, blow it up. Let's say I really wanted that cool bike in there. Um, and now, same thing here. This is just a, a title folder. I can just move this guy around if I didn't want that blocking out my bike. Move that up. So there's my bike title, or my, <laughs> sorry, the um, cover of my book. Uh, if I come down here to this next little tab, this is intro media. So let's say I wanted a video to play uh, as soon as my students opened up that book, and that's that space where I would drop that video. Um, I don't. I'm not a particular fan of the intro video or movie or image. I tend to skip that. Table of contents is something that I don't have to worry about. This is automatically going to be populated as my pages and chapters are, are added. 
So uh, the glossary, same thing for my glossary. Um, this are, I can add some terms as I go here, um, and uh, we'll see that as we go. So here we go. We're going to jump into the uh, chapters of my book. Again, I'm going to highlight this chapter here. If I wanted to uh, change up what that chapter looked like, I could have these different templates. So the templates are really nice in iBooks Author. Um, they give you some great templates to begin with. There's not a ton you have to do. They've even added that blank template now for both landscape and portrait. Um, and that might be worth talking about here real quick as well. Um, you know that obviously as you turn your iPad, things rotate. Um, so we can author in portrait view, which is what we're authoring in now. Um, but I could also change it to look like, uh, to get a look at what that would look like in, um, sorry, this is portrait view. We are authoring in landscape view. Um, there's that little toggle up here. Now if I wanted to just author in landscape only, there's a way to lock that into landscape only, and there's obviously a way to um, do portrait only, you would have selected the portrait only template. Um, all right, so let's just kind of get in here. Um, I'm just going to delete these two pages. We can select that and delete. Um, we'll just call this first, and you'll notice that as I typed on first there, that was a blue box. It's hot linked. If I go back here to my table of contents, you'll see that this is chapter one first. Um, and now I'm going to add in a section. So I'll just add in a section here. So, Steve, it looks like there's a lot of great things that you can do with iBooks Author, and it also seems like it's very, very easy to put one of these things together. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it really is. It, it really is just drag and drop, and you drop the stuff in. So I'm going to, let's see, if I've got anything open I can play with. Uh, oh, let's do, do my screen share. Sure. Anthony just dropped out. His, he'll be right back on. So what I, I would love to, and, and if you can help us out with this, or maybe Anthony can, I'm really interested in those widgets because okay. there's so many great things. He was showing us how to do the um, keynote widgets, and some of those things are quite intricate and amazing. Would you be able to share with us how you go from keynote into iBooks Author and how you create some pretty neat things? Absolutely. So I actually had something we did for the uh, hackathon last summer. I, I slapped together um, – and one of the things about Keynote is you can just drop it right into your iBook. And if you change your document type to links only, now it's not just a regular presentation. You actually have to interact with it in order to have anything happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, duplicate this slide. And I'm going to do it a couple more times. Um, so I, I'm a science teacher, and I, I decided I wanted to do something that was not sciencey for the other teachers that might be showing up. So I went with Civil War. So I found this map, and I created these maps just in GIMP. Um, so I can just drop these in. I'm going to go ahead and drop all three of my uh, maps in. All right, so um, back on this front slide, if I select the south here, and I can right-click on it, I can say add link, and I can say go to slide number two, because that's where the south is. Not so bad. I'll do the same thing for the north. And, and for the north with slaves. And we're good to go. The only problem is, is when I get to these slides, so if I start here and I hit play, I can go and I can jump to the south, but I haven't added any other links back in from those other slides. So I have to go in on the other slides and add my links in, and I'll do that real quick. And it really is, once you get the hang of it, it's, uh, you know, I just linked the, north to the um, it really goes pretty quick once you get the hang of what you're doing on this stuff. And in the past, I was able to copy links to go from slide to slide and just repaste them in, but something happened recently where uh, Keynote seems to be doing it differently. And that's one of the problems I've run into periodically with some of uh, Apple stuff is every now and again they update it and it changes the way it behaves, which it's not a big deal. Uh, you just have to get used to it. 
So it is interesting looking at what you're doing here to kind of get behind those different widgets because you do see something like this with an interactive map and you just think it's one slide or you think it's somehow magical things are happening but really this is how you deconstruct one of those widgets to make everything work absolutely so um so basically we have to just go in and add the links and there we go so you can do this with virtually any sort of content um, that you want so i another one that i had done uh, let me jump over into ibooks Minimized it earlier. Um, so this summer I created a, a just a book of kind of some cool widget examples, and let me make this bigger. Uh, slide it to the right just a little bit. All right. There you go. So uh, here's a more sciencey one that I made. So this is uh, if you know plants and my background is botany actually, um, alternation of generations. So again, I took the original image and I created it in GIMP and then created these other images of the different parts of the plant life cycle um, to highlight which types of tissue were present in which part of the life cycle. And again, this is just right within Keynote. Now, we have a few um, people here talking, Steve, about GIMP. What is GIMP? Is it difficult to pick up? So GIMP is a, an open source photo editing program. So think Photoshop only free and open source. So it's, uh, I wouldn't say easy, but it's not super hard. And I'll, I'll toss up a, a link later to this book because in here I did put some tutorials in how to do some of these things. And so is, is that available on the iTunes store? It's not, but uh, I keep thinking about putting it up there just for the fun of it. But uh, this was really something I slapped together really quick last year for the hackathon. And all the videos that are in here, I, I, I went ahead and embedded the videos from YouTube um, to keep the book size small. And so th all those videos are still up on YouTube also uh, on my channel. So that brings up another question. If you're not going to publish this to iTunes, where did you publish it to? So with our uh, hackathon, we had an iTunes U course set up with that, and we distributed a lot of our content through that iTunes U course. So you're uploading it into iTunes University? That's correct. Okay. So, and now the, the advantage to uploading it to the uh, iBook store is, of course, if I update it, anybody who's downloaded it will automatically get the updates. If I push it out to the uh, iTunes U and I update it, they would have to go into the iTunes U course and re-download the new copy after having deleted the old copy. Justin, what are you thinking about all this stuff here? I mean, this looks something very, very easy. And now that we've seen it deconstructed, I want to give this a, a chance with my own students. Definitely. Uh, j just with all the possibilities, uh, they're, they're definitely uh, a bit more advanced uh, in, in what they can do. So, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm trying to clean up around here right now because my mind was just blown a bit. But uh, I, I hadn't really thought about going into keynotes like that. And that's something that I've been meaning to do. Uh, I've kind of just more sampled on the basic end of the widgets. So I'm still learning all of the advanced parts. So all, all the examples that I have tend to be uh, either from Bookery or from the uh, or from the basic iBooks one. But yes, whenever I see those, it, it makes me start thinking about how I can apply that to class. Now, he mentioned Bookery. Bookery is a great tool that and, and we've had them on TeacherCast a couple times talking about how they're using iBooks author and book it's b o o k r y dot com. You can get some amazing widgets. In fact, most of the widgets found on our kid blog book that just popped out um, are done through Bookery. And there's a lot of videos that I put in that book, but instead of embedding everything in it, I just simply use the Bookery YouTube widget and it connects out again i was trying to keep everything as as clean as possible um anthony how you doing hey great <laughs> i just had a killer demonstration on ibooks author for like the last 10 minutes and then i saw safari quit unexpectedly it's really unexpectedly so i have no idea where i left you off sorry to leave you hanging that's okay um we 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 didn't see any of it <laughs> <laughs> um I, but really what i would love to have you 
do if you could screencast one more time you were showing off just like steve was some of these great keynote widgets could you deconstruct some of those widgets for us like steve just did and show us maybe how you did yours and and while you're pulling that up steve let me ask you about the time limit in here i know you showed us the one with the maps but when i'm looking at some of those they seem quite complicated is this something that takes hours to do or is it really an idea that once you can conceptualize what these keynote presentations can do you can start popping them out pretty quickly um, well it really varies with kind of your comfort level and I know uh, we, ha we have a widget that uh, one of the other people who are involved with the hackathon Tara Maynard put together where it was a, a, a practice widget for her math class but she actually put up the whole template out there for people to use so they could just, all the links are already there. You just have to embed the content in it. And is there a good link that you can give out? Maybe we can put in our show notes for these things of, you know, I know if I look on the Mac app store, there are apps that you can download that have tons of templates. And generally those are the free apps. And then if you spend $10, you can get like 20 or 30 more templates. You don't really right. need those because yeah. templates are just, as you've shown, they make a white square. And then they put some text over top, and then suddenly you have a book cover. Absolutely. Um, so I will uh, get you a link, um, at least a Terra's widget. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's just basically a keynote that she put together that had all of the links already. And all you have to do then is kind of go through and put your own content in. And you don't have to worry about any of the linking stuff. Perfect. Which is really a, a great thing. Perfect. Let's, let's swing over to Anthony. Anthony, what do you got for us? Sure. I'm actually not in Keynote, but I'm in a program that's very similar to Keynote um, and iMovie kind of combined. This is Hype to Multi-Hype uh, 2.0. And uh, this is one that um, I have not yet fully explored the possibilities of, but it holds a lot of great potential. So essentially we have just a blank canvas here. And a lot of the HTML widgets that I make, uh, I use Hype for, but I use it on a very uh, kind of limited basis. So I uh, just here's some elements that we can put in here. Obviously, we got text and buttons, and um, it allows for this interactivity. We can embed an image, a video, audio, all that good stuff. But this HTML widget, this iframe, essentially allows me to suck in anything that I can um, get an iframe for. So this would be something that you could create. You, you, you go to YouTube, you grab the iframe off of YouTube, and you can click and put that in here, and then it sucks that YouTube video into this page, and then you can export it as an iBooks author widget. So one of the things that I like to do uh, is I create a lot of interactive geometry sketches using GeoGebra. GeoGebra is totally free um, uh, software. Uh, you can download it. it and uh, what you do is then upload it to GeoGebra Tube. And then if I click on embed here, I can come over here and I can grab this little applet, uh, this iframe. So you see the little iframe code here. I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard, maybe. And uh, then I'm going to go back to hype. And if I click on my little pen here, I can just paste that in here. And then that's going to essentially just suck that worksheet right onto this page. And so I want my students to explore the area of triangles and rectangles and their relationship to each other. So here is a little interactive. I'm just going to blow my canvas down so you can see that. And uh, this is also the same way that you would get a, you know, a Google form in here. So if I want my students to be able to respond to a few questions um, on a Google form uh, in an iBook, then I would do the same thing. Uh, I would just come out here to Google and let's see here. I'll just grab one real quick so you can see that. And, uh, you know, with a Google form, you can embed... Um, you know, the, the iframe as well. So uh, I'm just going to grab kind of a silly one here. Anthony, while you're doing one. that, what was the name of that program that you were showing us how that works? Yeah, that's hype, tumult hype. What's the, uh, is there a link for that? Or, or if you're as are out there in the chat, maybe we can uh, share a link for that. I'll put it in the show notes. Absolutely. Uh, yep, you can just go to tumult.com. And uh, actually, you can download it from the Mac App Store as well. Although if you go through the Tumult Hype site and you click on their link for purchasing for education, you can get it for $29. I think it's a little bit more expensive through the App Store. So here is, that's great advice, and you should definitely do that because teachers need all the discounts they can get. Woohoo! <laughs> um, here's the Google Form. I'm just going to click on Embed, and uh, obviously there's a little iframe there. I'm just going to grab that same thing here. 
and I'm going to copy and paste that into another one of these iframe elements uh, in hype here. So this is, there we go. And now I have this little quiz. I'm just going to make this flow. I'm just going to hang this right down here in the bottom. Obviously, this is a slopes quiz on something that's talking about perimeter and rectangles or triangles. So once I'm done with that, I'm just going to go here to file and export and I export that as an iBooks author widget, which is beautiful. So I'll just call this um, this widget. And I'll save that to my desktop. Once that's there, I'm going to go back to my book that I was sharing with you guys earlier and crushing it until hype or whatever. Sorry, uh, Safari quit <laughs> on me. And uh, if I just go back here to my desktop, there's my widget. And I'm just going to drag that widget right down here into the page of my book. And uh, if I wanted to uh, preview this now, see what this looks like, you'll see there's my uh, Google form. This is going to open up in a full page for my students, or I can have them interact with it on the page. Um, and as soon as this loads, now this is a streaming widget, so this does require wireless connect, uh, connection. However, GeoGebra offers you the ability to download them for offline viewing. Um, however, they're a little bit heftier in size. You've got quite a bit of code behind that. Uh, and there you go. So you can actually interact with this even in preview mode. So uh, my students are going to rotate these triangles around. They're going to grab the edges of this rectangle, make it a parallelogram, but they're going to be able to explore the relationship between triangles, the area of a triangle and the area of a rectangle. And then they're going to come down here and they're going to take a quiz in, uh, on this Google form. They're going to answer these. They're scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, and they hit submit. Um, and that's actually not going to kick them out. They would stay in the book, but since I was in preview mode and iBooks author, that's what it did. So they once they hit submit in their book, the teacher on the other end gets that data, and uh, that keeps them right there in the book, keeps them real close to the learning, and gives the teacher some great feedback, some great data. That's a pretty neat way to do uh, online assessments, is to put everything in an iBooks program. Absolutely. Yeah, you keep them really close to the learning. They can access the content on the previous page, they can go back into the widget and open that back up, so on and so forth. So, so that's, uh, that's two molt hype. Nice. Very, very and nice. Yeah, there's a ton more uh, you know, features to that. Um, it allows for a lot of that, that magic move interactivity. Down here you have a timeline that if you wanted to move things around, animate your screen, um, you know, you can do that all here on this timeline. So lots and lots of potential. That's just a scratch of the surface. And does hype compress things? So if I take a video and I put it into here and I want it to export it into an HTML widget, does it, is it a one-to-one -one transfer or will it squish down video to, to make things smaller for you? So that's a good question. Steve, do you know the answer to that? I, I don't think it does any compression for you. Um, and I, I want to say when I played around at one point when I was bringing images in and playing with uh, animation, because hype is really a keyframe animation, if you know what that means. Uh, I didn't know what that means until I got hype. But what does that um, mean? It, it just means you 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 kind of set frames where you 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 set the action. This is what it's going to look like at this spot, and then you, a little time later in your timeline, you say this is what it's going to look like at this spot, and then it'll animate the path to get from one frame to the next frame. And so you can tell it how long uh, that should take. So if you're in, in interested in doing animation, it's a great platform for you. But if you're interested in just having it as a way to bring in a Google form or a Google whatever, um, right. you know, again, assuming it's just running HTML. So you can put, what, YouTube videos in there. You can put Google yeah, Forms. Was, you yeah. can put Google it Presentations, it Docs. Right, it was originally created um, for web pages. And when uh, iBooks Author first came out with these HTML5 widgets you could put in, people realized you could take the output from Hype and put it into iBooks Author, and then uh, Tumult actually made that an export option. And so it, it's just all HTML5 and JavaScript in, in behind there. And you can actually dig into the widget, and you can see all of that all that stuff. But yeah, so basically I like to say if, if you can run it in Safari on your iPad and there's an embed code, you can probably put it in a widget using Hype and drop it right into your iBook. I think that's the best thing that we've talked about all night. There's a lot of neat things. I'm certainly going to check it out. Now, you say that one more time. Right now, I'm looking at this on the App Store, and it is $49.99. How does an educator take advantage of this? So if you go to uh, the Tumult Hype 
page. So if you go to tumult.com slash hype slash purchasing, mm -hmm. there's a link then to the Tumult Education Store, and it's uh, only $30 through the Tumult Education Store. Nice. So that's really, really cool. If you are interested in more information about iBooks Author or how to use it, everything here is going to be in our show notes over at teachercast.net slash TEP82 for a Tech Educator Podcast episode 82. So teachercast.net slash TEP82. Looking at everything that you're doing here makes me wonder what is next? What can you do? How? What happens if you put a whole bunch of educators together in a room and just say, have at it? And Steve, you are working with Anthony on a on a a conference called the iBook Hack. Tell us a little bit about that. So that's basically what we're trying to do. So right now, um, many of us are beholden to textbook companies, uh, and we know that the textbooks aren't necessarily what we need to teach from. And so, I know I personally threw out my textbook several years ago, but I found I needed something. And so, what we're trying to do is bring teachers together so that they can put together the resources that they need for their students that match the way they teach rather than the way the textbook companies think they should teach. So all too often, uh, our teachers rely on the textbook as their curriculum. And I really get tired of hearing teachers say, well, I really like this one book, except it doesn't have this one section that I want, so we're going to use a different book instead um, because it has all the sections we need. And I'm like, that's not really the way to go. Uh, you're, you need to set your curriculum rather than let the textbook set the curriculum for you. And so that's what we're trying to show people um, with our iBook hacks and then also give them the tools they need because Tony and I get up and, and we, we give talks on, on uh, iBooks at different conferences and we always show them our, our coolest flashiest stuff with our interactives and our hype widgets and people freak out. They're like, how could I ever possibly do that? Not realizing that they can get started and actually do some really cool stuff without having to have all of those other pieces tossed in. Um, that. We didn't start there. We we brought, up, brought those in later. And so we're just trying to give people the tools they need so that they can actually get started and get a thing made over the summer so that when they go back in the fall, they've got something they can work with for their students. Now, just so we're clear here, is this ed the EdCamp model for iBooks or is this more hands-on learning? Let's just, you know, roll up our sleeves and have a good time with this. Uh, well, it's kind of a mix. So we'll have some sessions which are – iPad or I, iBooks Basics or iBooks Intermediate or Keynote for Interactivity. And then we'll also have time where it's just let's get in a room and work and we'll have some people who know stuff walking around helping you out, answering, answering questions, solving problems. Neat, neat. Um, when is it? Where is it? How much is it? And where do we find more information? I'm going to toss that back to Tony because we're <laughs> still looking. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's coming this summer, June 29th to July 1st. Um, it's a three-day event, and so it's really unlike any other. We like to kind of coin the phrase, it's a one-of-a-kind event, because it has a purpose, a direct purpose. It's not your typical um, come, sit, and get a little iPad PD. This is you're here to make something that you can use, that you can continue to build upon, that you can be really proud of, that it's going to really change um, your teaching and learning environment. We've got some great testimonies around that, and I'll share those with you later, but um, it's it's an event where it, it takes on a different pace. Yes, there is heavy learning up front. So we talk not only about iBooks Author and that publishing software piece, but we also talk about copyright, Creative Commons, um, creating digital content for yourself. And you know, a lot of teachers don't aren't very familiar with that. That's a real changing role for our teachers. Is that they're now becoming kind of these instructional designers. Technology is kind of forcing that role on us, right? I mean, we can either sit back and just let all the automation do it and, you know, purchase the real costly digital content from publishers um, that we still have to kind of tweak uh, and, 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 you know, um, or we can get in there and we can make it ourselves and, and we can create it, uh, tailor it for our students. And so we're finding that teachers that are coming to these are really passionate about um, having an impact in their classroom and about being some digital content creators uh, and not just kind of passively satisfying, you know, sat being satisfied with the status quo. They really want that yeah, yeah, status grow. So um, so one of a kind of event. Um, there's a lot of this open hack time where you know teachers have the ability to just sit down and work on their content. You know, we give them these instructional design principles to, to work off of. We get them to sketch out what their book should look like. Um, and you know, we kind of get them brainstorming where they can get interactive videos, how they can create their own, where, you know, how to cite things properly, how to use things, you know, that are copyrighted or not use them if they're copyrighted. 
um, things like that. So it's it's really unique, and uh, you know, people walk away saying this has been some some of the best professional development they've ever received, uh, and we're seeing that it's really having a, a a great impact on student learning as well. We have a couple of questions about this on our live chat. Uh, will Steve be there giving autographs? Heck yeah, he will. Excellent. That's right. Although you can't really read my autograph, but that's okay. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Um, so definitely check that out over at iBookHack.org. Um, an amazing website, an amazing resource, and three days of learning how to use this great free tool for your students. I know this year I started creating iBooks. In fact, even Tuesday, we're going to be doing our first project in my History of Rock class. And it's all done on iBooks Author. The kids love it. They download all the books onto their Macs. If they want, they then can also download it onto their iPads. I love the fact with iBooks, you don't have to have a Mac. I know I always export things also out to PDF. You don't get the same interactivity, but the content is there. You know, the text is there, the links are there. So it's it's a great resource for for teachers of any subject or grade level. Justin, tell us a little bit about um, some of the great things that are coming up here. Um, we're gonna wrap up a little bit here, but tell us a little bit about what's happening soon on the iBooks chat. Sure. Uh, on the iBooks chat, uh, we are right now. We're working on uh, the theme park, and we're having some guest moderators uh, in uh, just probably about three or four weeks. Uh, we're looking at more kind of running how this uh, podcast works as far as having adding more of a digital component. That way, we can uh, more show people uh, some of the examples and what iBooks can do because we figured that would be one of the best ways to really lure be beginners in and also enable us to all really uh, show our wares and show every every great thing that we're doing in our classrooms. And so uh, that's the idea of iBooks chat is that, you know, we can we can gradually bring in more people. We can, uh, we can show these great things that we're doing, how to improve it, how we can tie that to students, how we can tie that to teachers. Excellent. So certainly look out for that chat on Thursday nights. And uh, guys, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Anthony, Steve, f one more time, thank you for coming back on the show and showing us more advanced features. I know we didn't even cover half the stuff we had planned as far as publishing and really that, that second level, okay, after you've done it, uh, presentation. So we definitely want to have you guys back on the show for future um, events. Um, Justin, where can we find more information about you online? Uh, well, I have uh, my Twitter name is J A Bell Pepper, uh, and uh, I have a website uh, J A Bell Pepper dot Weebly dot com. So uh, that's W E E B L Y dot com, and uh, I have the past files, uh, the past archives of iBooks chats, I have other educators, uh, I have a number of links uh, that tie to different uh, con that tie to different content showing how to do iBooks. Uh, I have a tutorial about iBooks on there, so uh, I, I just try to put as many great resources as I could in one place, so if anybody wants to check that out. Excellent. And we will certainly make sure that we have all of that information in our show notes. Again, teachercast.net slash TEP82. Steve, where can we find out all about the great stuff that's happening in your classroom? Uh, well, you can find me at uh, Falcon Physics on Twitter. I'm also at falconphysics.blogspot.com is the most common blog place that I end up. Um, and then I'm, I'm really kind of all over the place. So if you just search for me, you'll probably find me uh, in a variety of locations. Anthony, where can we find out more about the great stuff in your neck of the woods? Sure, you can get me on Twitter at Anthony Delora. Um, also, have a blog that I don't write on a whole lot. Uh, it's really hard for math teacher to write. No. Um, AnthonyDelora.wordpress.com. Um, iBook Hack is probably a great uh, website that, yeah, that we are pushing out. And we're sharing what other teachers have done through our uh, events in the past and trying to just build some more momentum there and see if we can't you know, get other teachers authoring some great content. 
Excellent. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the show today. All of our archives can be found over on our website, techeducatorpodcast.com, part of the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. This is show number 82. I want to bring your attention to a few things. We had a great show last week all about Google Classroom, and that little video has taken off on YouTube. So check it out. It's number it's episode number 81. We also had fun time a few weeks ago, a uh, show number 80. We talked all about Twitter with uh, Susan Bearden and her amazing using Twitch Me app. And then show number 79, we talked all about Google Scholar and using Google as a research tool. Check out these resources today. Also, make sure that you go to teachercast.net slash kidblogbook and uh, download your app. Sorry, download our brand new iBook all on KidBlog. Um, it's an amazing new book and certainly want to say check it out. Also, if you have a chance, check out iBooks Chat every single Thursday night. Um, it is a great time. Thank you so much for watching the Tech Educator Podcast, episode number 82. My name is Jeff Bradbury from TeacherCast. Join us each and every week. You can, of course, connect with us over at TeacherCast.net and leave us a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. If you also could, check us out Check us out over on iTunes at TeacherCast.net slash iTunes. Leave us a review. Leave us a nice rating and tell us what you think about our show. We will be back next Sunday where we have an amazing show on app smashing with our great friend John Carippo talking about how we can smash Final Cut and Keynote together and create some great movies with your students. So check that out. On behalf of everybody here at the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, take care of yourself and continue sharing your passions with your students.